judgment on the pleadings. I have read the papers. I have taken a look at all the exhibits, and I have some questions for both of you. But before I have questions, I'd like to hear from, first of all, the defendant's uh, attorney with respect to his motion, and then I'll hear from plaintiff's attorney. But I do have questions for you about some of the cases that were cited. So, Mr. Keston. Your Honor, since you've read the papers, I don't want to go through it, but the, uh, the, operative, the operative contract in this case uh, was signed on April 1st, 2014 for a three-year term with a, a relatively standard provision of a notice, uh, notice required before, before or else it would be automatically renewed for one year. Um, the plaintiff's, so uh, he was given proper notice in the correct period of time of non-renewal. Non-renewal is not a termination. That, that is a That seems to what be with the parties. There seem to be sort of two arguments of non-renewal versus discharge or termination and agreement versus employment. It is, so I don't think I don't think there's a real disagreement that he was not terminated. He was not renewed. The plaintiff's argument, as somebody said, we're talking, we're talking about this, it sort of hurts the mind to understand. They if we say that the contract is not ambiguous, you you'll be an employee for three years. Uh, and you get another year if you don't notify you, and then you'll cease to be an employee. Either three years with notification, four years without. The, and the intent of the contract, I suggest, is clear, but really, that's the intent. There's no other vote required. The chapter is mentioned, the, the charter is mentioned in paragraph 14 of the agreement, which says if you're going to be uh, terminated, and they're talking about termination, then the charter applies. That's what paragraph 14 says. Clearly talking about terminated during the contract. He's at will. If he's terminated with a supermajority during the contract, for no cause, he gets six months. For cause, he gets nothing. That's what the contract says. The termination provision referring to the charter contemplates termination within the contractual period. The plaintiff suggests, the plaintiff's argument is really this. He always gets to stay. They need two votes, not just a vote not to renew. Or even if they don't say they didn't give notice. At the end of four years, he would get to stay unless the supermajority terminated. He gets to stay until the supermajority. However, they argue, they're arguing the contract only defines the terms, such as pay, duties, everything else. If you believe their argument, then three members of the board could, could have, could vote to say, OK, we don't afford to terminate you, so we're eliminating a, you get no salary, you get nothing, and you have nothing to do. So, yes, you're still an employee because we can't, we don't have four months. But since the contract is gone, which they say only governs the conditions, that's their argument. It makes, it's wholly irrational. The, I suggest to me the contract is clear. He was hired for three years with a fourth year option at the control of the town. And the town chose not to exercise the option, which means when the contract is over, that's it. He's no longer an employee. Um, to adopt another another uh, interpretation is wholly logical. The contract is clear. It's a very tortured reading of the contract to suggest that all that happens at the end of the contractual period, be three years or four years is that the terms and duties, all, everything up by the contract, are no longer in effect. So as I said, if that's true, then what? They should have voted that, OK, you, we, we, we're cutting off here. You're not being paid. You have no duties. You have no car. You have no health benefits, because that's all contractual. And you can sit by the And you can't be not allowed to come to town. And you can sit and still call yourself the town manager. That's the argument. So I, frankly, I sort of I even said that to the board. You know, you could do that they somehow win because it makes no sense. But I think that the contract is unambiguous. Mr. Hartman knew what he was signing. It's what they bargained for. During, he agreed, they agreed, paragraph 14, that during the period of the contract, during those three or four years, he could only be terminated with a supermajority, four votes. Because that's the charter provision they're referring to. But once, but if the contract is over, you don't get to stay. You're done. That's the argument. That, that, that's our position, and as you know, at the preliminary injunction 
phrase, uh, this court not only decided no irreparable harm, but actually talked about the merits. And, uh, yes, Judge Richard, you need to address the success on the merits. Yeah. So. I believe it is different from um, termination, and I actually want to address uses of language. Well, is non-renewal the same then as discharge? It can be a form of discharge, but it, if, if it, so it is different. Actually, let me, let me say that. Renewal and discharge are two different modes of ending employment in a usual context, but this is not a usual context. It's a very specific one. So in a, an employer, Pet is not governed by charter that's limited by home rule and it's not by statute. Their private employers don't have to keep somebody employed unless they have a contract that says they do. And, and then even they don't have to keep them employed. They just have, then there becomes remedies for it. So do you say a, um, a person in a situation like this department then is a tenured employee? Absolutely not, Your Honor. So let's, again, I think it's about language that gets very muddled here. Tenure is a, a just cause standard. It means you can only be removed for certain reasons. Nothing changes that either in the contract or, or under the charter. Having a contract does not mean you're not at will. The contract can say, we can remove you at any time. So you're still then at will. He was not tenured. He was but at he will. Had, he had a set term. That's the argument. I, I, that's not a fact. The question is whether that valid if it even exists and it's even questionable whether it exists but, but before we get there i think there's this very important point that's missing here is that um oh well, i was just sorry he is he remains at will the charter says he is at will the contract says he's at will the term gives him a period of time in which he has certain rights so during that term he can still be removed because he wore purple to work. If four people vote for him to leave, they can send, get him gone for no just cause. That's what at will means. But if they get rid of him, even the day before his contract ends, or the first day his contract started, they had to pay him six months of severance. He didn't get three years of severance if he got paid, if he got fired the first day, and he didn't get one day of severance if he gets paid at the end. The contract created a contractual right that, and in that term, that's what his right is. Outside of that term, he has no right to severance. So just like the last town manager who stayed on for years with no contract, if they voted four, four to one to get rid of him, then he got no severance. On the flip side, then you say, so why would they give that to him? Well, one, it's a negotiation, and the town manager wanted that. But second is, there were also rights created on the town manager. He had to give 60 days notice. Otherwise, outside the contract period, he could just stop showing up one day. So the contract does create just rights. And I, I want to address that because I want to be 100% clear, and I have a copy of the statute, Your Honor. Which statute are you talking about? The statute that governs this contract is in the very first line of the I got it, because I read all these cases you said. One, oh, well, thank you. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't I, agree with your interpretation of a few of them. Okay, well, let's go through them then. Um, chapter 41, Section 1089. Notwithstanding any provision of the special laws, and blah, 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 it says um, a city or town acting through its board of selectmen may establish an employment contract for a period of time to provide for, and it says what it provides for. Notably missing in here is that it provides for a term of the contract, a period of time. It can provide for all the conditions, all these other benefits, severance, salary, fringe benefits, uh, relocation expenses, reimbursement. And then going down two more paragraphs, it says. What about a period of time? So it's saying it'll have a contract that exists for a period of time. It doesn't say that the employment would be for a period of time. The words for a period of time to find the word contract, not the word employment. Otherwise, it would say they would establish an employment for a period of time pursuant to contracts. 
So the contract, and that's what happens here. There is a contract for a period of time for salary, fringe benefits, and other conditions. And then going down below, it says, nothing contained in this section shall affect the appointment or removal powers. And for there, you have to then go back to the charter, which says you, you exist, you, the town manager is employed at will until he is discharged by four people. And there is, so there is an incredible anomaly in what um, the town is arguing. It's basically saying that during the period of the contract, they agree he, has to, he can only be removed for four votes. If he stayed on after the contract, like the previous person did, he would also still need four votes to be removed. Because the, the charter at that point says the only way you can be removed after, if you're outside the contract period too, is through discharge, is four votes. So the only thing that they're saying is, at the moment this contract ends, it can be by three votes, but no case, but nothing gives them the right to do that. There's no, oh, excuse me, my mouth is dry. There's no right um, anywhere for them to limit the term. And that's what they themselves understood. I will say, it is what all five selectmen in their public statements right now agree with. The, the, con the, the contract controls, the law controls. No, well, I beg to differ. The law does control, but contract does not. The contract is subject to the statute and the town charter. And the town charter says the only method of removal it is through four. The only it's silent it against anything else. It, it just mean. says discharge. Yeah, it doesn't mention non-renewal. Because that's not an option. So it doesn't, it doesn't, the charter also doesn't say you can so have a contract with non-renewal, which by the way, another town does have that shows when you want it, you put it in. Well, there's some, that case from the federal district court where they talk about, we'll come back to that. Which I don't, sorry, the, I don't just case that is off the top of my head. I was thinking of the Met the Air case, but that's that's not apropos. Um, so, so according to you, um, non-renewal is not an option. Correct. So they can't create that option for themselves. So, so, so what's the point of having a set period of time in a contract for these benefits? The set period of time is exactly what the statute says. It's to give you certain benefits. This, by the way, is fairly common in employment, where they, in fact, that's what Ham, before Handbooks all had disclaimers, that's exactly what Handbooks so, used so to do. So can you cite me a case that's, if it's so common, can you cite me a case that is, the facts are similar to this case? Well, no, they're not, because there's not other cases that are governed by statute. But, uh, but, oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> I've never had such strong mouth, I'm sorry. Um, I, I guess I didn't go to look for a case where somebody sued for violation of a contractual right that had nothing to do with being fired. In other words, if I'll give you an example off the top of my head. I go to get hired by another firm, and they say to me, um, we're going to provide you with health care benefits. We're going to pay 100% of your benefits of your insurance. That's a term of the contract. I can still be fired tomorrow, but they've given me that, right? So while I'm hired, they could say, and this actually they do say, for the next year, we'll provide you benefits. We will decide at the end of that year what we're doing. And in fact, employers do that all the time. At the end of that year, then they'll come back and say, no, we're only covering 90% of your, your insurance premiums. We're only covering 80% of your premiums. But during that contract year, they were, and they say, oh, for the next year we're going to do that, they are obligated to pay 100% of my benefits, even though they're not, while I'm employed, but they don't have to keep me employed. So okay. that would be it. Or I have, we have, uh, I've seen contracts with nonprofits where they say, for every, for this, you will be employed at will, so there's no term to that. For this year, we'll, we'll provide you with a certain amount of money for professional development. 
for that year will provide you with a different one. So the point of the contract is to provide the, the various benefits, not to provide the term of employment. That seems like a nonsensical reading of the contract to me. Except that the contract, and that's what I'm saying, this is not just a contract case. It has to be read against the charter. And the charter says you are employed and accept by at will except if they discharge you. And discharge is not the same thing as non-renewal. But the silence as to non-renewal means they don't have the power to do it. Just like the, it's actually very, very much the two cases, and maybe these are the ones we need to discuss. I don't know. Um, yeah, right. Agawam and Caprera. Yeah, well, Caprera, uh, you know, that was a case where they wanted to remove the chairman of the town council, and their charter provided a fixed term, but no removal process. Here, the charter doesn't set a fixed term. Correct, which is because it's indefinite, and what they're trying to do. So essentially, we are so what they but what they did here wasn't violating the charter, if that's the case. The charter there set a fixed term. Well, they are. It, they are trying to. They're trying to contract for themselves the right, essentially, to get rid of the town manager in, without four votes. And that's why I'm saying that's an incongruent outcome, because it means during the period of the contract, he needs four votes. And if he stays over it, or doesn't have a contract ever, they don't have to have a contract. No, but he would have four votes. So, and he every- has a contract, and he's got a three-year expectation of having a job. Then they need four votes to get rid of him. But if, in fact, he works for the three-year set contract period of time, and before the end of that time, three people think not to renew him, he doesn't get renewed. Why is that? Because the day after, if they keep him, on July 15th last year, so and they kept him for two weeks, they then would have needed four votes. He would have had no contract, and he would have needed four votes. If they hired him at will, he would have needed four votes. So that position means that he needs four votes during the contract, and he needs four votes after the contract. But somehow you can contract just to have Three votes. Because they wouldn't need four votes after because he'd be non-renewed. No, no, no. What I'm saying is if they kept him on as they did the last person. They keep people on. Not all town managers in Stilton have had contracts. So right. the last one, his contract ended. And back then, they had the same interpretation we do. So they specifically said to him, but we understand your employment will continue. You're talking about a couple of guys who were involved in the, the uh, council. They, people that were on the council at the time who may have had uh, a reason to take a particular stand took a particular view of the law. So what had happened then, you're right, it's a, to be clear, three of the five of them wanted a removal at that point, and they couldn't get a vote for four. So under advice of the town council at that point, they said, you are, your employment continues. You will have no contract. We have not renewed your contract, but your employment will continue. And as to the argument that he would be paid nothing, that's actually not true, first of all. Wage and hour law applies. He'd have to be paid minimum wage. And as to stripping him of his duties, they could not do that because the charter gives him his, uh, his duties. That's exactly the point. The charter rules here. So if he, they couldn't have said, fine, you stay and we won't pay you and we won't give you duties. The not paying would have been in violation of the Fair Labor Standards Act. And the taking his duties would have been a void contract under the under the town charter, which gives him his duties. He actually the charter says what his duties are. That's exactly what they're trying to do: is take rights that they don't have. They would not have had the right to take away his duties, and they don't have the right to get rid of him to discharge him from employment. It doesn't say in that, in that regard the. The defendant's attorney just said, chapter, uh, section 14 talks about termination. No, it doesn't. It talks about discharge. The words matter. The contract is actually written knowing what the law means. The contract itself never says that the employment term is three years. But the, the agreement is called an employment agreement. And then the words say what they mean. There's two different provisions. There's one for employment, 
and one for the term of the contract. And you'll notice the thing that's the contract provision that, that talks about employment never says his employment is limited to three years. First paragraph, the number term one. Is, the term of this employment agreement, it's called an employment The term agreement. of the agreement is three years, but the right. employment, the section I, that says employment. Each other, but the employment, it's called an employment agreement. That's the Correct, the it topic. is. It's an agreement that covers his employment, as opposed to a sales contract or a car contract. Right, so the term is three right. years. The, of the contract. You can have a contract term that's separate. So, for example, in those two cases where the people sued saying that they were entitled to severance benefits or certain other things that in private sector. Um, Are you talking about Downing and Murano? Well, it's, or yeah, it was, it was uh, Formato and Tickmo were the two. Um, Formato and, and Tickmo were the two that were non-public employees. So there, they were suing for severance benefits that existed only under the contract. And the contract was not renewed, so they said, fine, it's not renewed. Um, and so he said, well, you then, you essentially discharged me then. Um, but that's not true. He went through the contract. He got to work till the end of the contract. The severance benefits only existed during the term of the contract. He could have been kept on the next day without a contract. But in both of those cases, their letters specifically said, and by the way, we're not having you come back, your employment is also ending. Because ending the contract is different from ending the employment. The background rule for in both employment, in public and private employment, is at will. You, you are there until your employment. You can have a contract or not have a contract. And the only contract you can have is for the terms of your employment, not the period of time of it. You, you, you can't have an employment contract? For the town manager. The town manager, the only authority for what the, uh, the Where city... Where does it say there that there's no right to set the term? There's no right to give it. Silence. So municipalities... So the, town charter, the town charter gives the board of selectmen the authority to appoint a town manager, does it not? And then to discharge it four votes. Discharge is different from non-renewal. And that's where those two other cases come in. There's silence. Where there's silence, there's not, they're basically trying to contract around that. The only way to get rid of a town manager under the, the only express before way. Before the term of his employment is over. Before, is the, before, at any point, there's nothing in the charter that talks about a term of employment. He is at will which means he can be removed for any reason, except to be removed, it has to be for. There's nothing in the charter that talks of contracting, and it doesn't give them the right to contract short of remove. They're basically creating a way to say, you, you would um, only ever work, uh, that we, we're deciding to get rid of you in advance. It would be no different from if they um, contracted and said, but we can go to fire you. That's no different. They're just creating a right to get rid of somebody that doesn't exist in the town charter. The tar charter only provides one way of getting rid of. So when the town hires someone pursuant to the charter, they're stuck with that person in less than four votes, no matter what. For the town manager. So it's only the town manager oh, and whoever else is under that charter provision. Well, so so uh, there never has to be an affirmative renewal of the contract by the town. It doesn't have to be a contract at all. So, but the, if, if the town appoints someone, or the board of selectmen appoints someone, they, they're, they've, they're stuck with that guy unless uh, they decide to discharge him. So he's basically serving there until he wants to, unless they decide affirmatively to discharge him. Yes, and that's actually what the voters wanted. And that's why different towns have different provisions for that. They wanted it to not, the town manager is a very specific form of government in, in Massachusetts. I know. And they don't want the town managers to be removed willy-nilly. Right? They didn't, that's why they can provide for a specific well, term. It wasn't exactly willy-nilly because he was three years and then three years more, right? But, that, but that's just because that's what they said. They could have done it for four days and then four days more and then four days more. 
right? There's nothing in, under what you're saying and what they're arguing under the charter, there's nothing that stopped them from saying, you have a contract for one day and we'll decide to renew it. We have a contract for another day. If he agreed to it. There's two parties to a contract, right? So, Mr. Well, Hartman, there's three parties to a public contract. Okay. The public. Well, Mr. Hartman would have to agree to that. But the fact that the two parties agree to it doesn't make it right. That you can't contract out of what the, what the thing is. So take my example. Let's say they said, we have, we're giving you a contract for one day. And unless we notify you by 5 o'clock the day before, it ends the next day. And so then they just don't say anything day after day. And then one day they simply say, because they have three votes, okay, tomorrow it ends. But Mr. So they basically- has, But Mr. Hartman has the right to say, I don't want the job under those circumstances, doesn't he? Certainly he could, except that what he took the job under the circumstances was reading the town charter. And that's a factual issue beyond uh, the pleadings here, but I will tell you that he was told by people that that's what it meant. He was told the interpretations from 2007 and, and five of the selectmen, all five of the current selectmen in public statements agree with his interpretation. So as do uh, 40 people who, uh, in town meeting who signed a letter. They all believe that the people through their town charter that they amended, they went from, from um, unanimity down to four, and some other towns have three, right? Other, some other towns provide that you only need three to remove. Some, in one town, as I pointed out, there may be others, I didn't go through all like 160 of them, um, says you can either discharge or remove um, by non-renewal, but here's what the process for non-renewal is. So it actually specifically gives that authority, whereas there's not the authority for that here. They can contract for his salary, for his professional development, for his leave. They can't, by contract, give themselves the right to get rid of their town manager at a certain point. Do you want to respond, Mr. President? Very quickly, Your Honor. He was hired for a term. Excuse me? He was hired for a term. I mean, that's, that's the fallacy that there are. There's nothing, the charter doesn't say they can't hire for a term. He was hired for a term. And the term expired. He was not discharged. He was not terminated. The charter never came in. Everyone knows we're bargaining for the contract. I suggest it can only be read, logically read one way, which is three years with a one-year option right time. With the control of the okay. Your Honor, just on just sure. the point, because I realized the cases. The other set of cases, there were four cases about when you contract. If you contract for rights, even if two parties contract. Which cases are you talking so about? So these are Clover Hill, Duff, Darling, and Giovanni. They were cited in our brief. I have to find it. Um, You know, the case that I was thinking about, the federal case that you cited, was you met Tibier, and you suggested there that the contract created an obligation on the part of the incumbent employee to remain on the job, uh, that, 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 that would, this contract had a similar term. It would require him to stay on the job whether he had a contract or not. And I, didn't, I thought that case was the opposite, because in that case, the term not only required uh, that you should hold on for three years, but also have the additional term and until the successor is qualified. That's towards the end of your brief, where you're talking about the issue of uh, agreement versus employment. For um, intentional impairment? Okay, so wait. I thought I could read every case I cited, Your Honor. And I'm sure you did read every case well, I cited. Well, no, no, no. I mean, I thought I read them all again yesterday. <laughs> so um, let's, uh, let me find it for you. But for some reason, that one's missing. No, uh, in my it's on page 15. The second sentence okay, is, this is a the section about how long okay. he agrees to continue employment along with restrictions from other employment. So you agree that Mr. Hartman agreed, I will work for three years. Okay. No. He okay. agrees that I will work for three years, but I can give 60 days notice right. of leaving. Along with restrictions. And so you say there. Correct. Describe this. You cite this case. Oh, there it is. Right there. Right now. An it's obligation right. on the part of the end to remain on the job. Okay. That's a, you know. I'm just saying it created a 
All I was trying to do there was say that the paragraph, the first paragraph under employment is about his promise. It's not about the town's promise. The so clear he has, words there. He has a promise that he will serve for three years unless he decides otherwise or unless the town discharges him. Correct. But the town doesn't have any term here. They right. Are, they're bound by it no matter what. Unless they decide to get four people to discharge it. Which is not an easy thing to do. So he's banking on that. Exactly. So right. he's, he has a set term that he doesn't have to work beyond no matter what. But the town does not have that option. Correct. And that's why, the, and that's one of the reasons the, co the town wants a contract. that's saying, we want you to give us a promise because we already are stuck keeping you unless we have four votes. We, we don't want you coming in and going willy-nilly, although he can leave. He has to give 60 days. Right, that's not a very strong no. requirement. Well, in part because we know courts aren't going to enforce making somebody work for somebody, right? We, we all know that we, we, courts don't do that. They don't grant, give injunctions requiring employees to work. There's all kinds of public policy against that. Maybe, but he's not giving up very much there, right? He gave up something. He he he's stating in a contract. I mean, it just for what? It, yes, as, in terms of a legal right, I will tell you this. I had this debate with my rabbi, who I happen to also represent in a contract negotiation, and we were having a whole debate about contract, the term of the contract. And I said to him, "You know, you can leave at any time." And he says, "No. If it's in writing, it means I've made an obligation." So he a rabbi might be different from a town manager. Uh, I would think that that's a true statement. I would hope it would be more true than it is. Um, then, but the point is, this is stating his intent, and he has to give 60 days. That's true. He can leave, and they can vote four to one the day after he starts. Okay. But okay. so. Okay, then. No, 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 there were those four cases, and in those cases, the parties tried to contract around what the provisions were, Clover Hill, Duff, so you had kept saying, well, the parties contracted to it, he agreed to it. But the mere agreement, if it's in violation. But there's nothing specifically in the charters that says that the board of selectmen cannot set a term. That was but, the first point. But municipalities have only limited um, authority and power, unlike a private employer, and so they only have the authority that's granted to them in this, the, and the charter is silent. We all agree on that. It doesn't give them the right to contract, and it certainly doesn't require it. And they've certainly had town and managers. What do you say is the best case for you on that issue? The fact that the charter does not say they cannot set a set term. The charter says the board of selectmen can appoint the town manager. What's the best case for the you? The town of Agawam. And then Caprera, Caprera right after that. Great. Okay, thank you, Ron. Anything else? No, nope. thank you very much. Very good time.